There is recent evidence that malnutrition and undernutrition are long overlooked and important factors in determining the ability of children to learn. A recent national survey done for the Department of Education paints a picture of a country with more than 40 million illiterate or barely literate adults. Other estimates are much higher. Depends on the definition of literacy. The literacy of young adults has slipped dramatically in the last decade. The vast majority have no idea how bad their reading is. Only 4% of those at the highest reading level are in poverty. But 43% of those at the lowest reading level are. Although it's not the only factor, of course, the better you can read, in general, the more you make. And you're much more likely to be in prison if you're illiterate or barely literate. My testimony today comes, the, the delivered um, uh, written testimony, Senator Harkin, comes from a, an article uh, that I wrote with Ann Drian in the March 6th, 1994 issue of Parade. The two of us come from families that knew grinding poverty, but our parents were readers. One of our grandmothers learned to read because her father, who was a subsistence farmer, traded a sack of onions to an itinerant teacher. She then read for the next hundred years. She died at the age of 103. Our parents followed prescriptions on childhood nutrition recommended in the 1930s by the Department of Agriculture uh, as if they were handed down from Mount Sinai. And uh, I remember this uh, book on how to take care of your children from the Department of Agriculture uh, on its last legs with pages uh, scotch tape back together again and uh, in a position of, uh, of uh, great respect in our, in our household. Uh, for a while, my parents gave up smoking, which were one of the few pleasures available to them in the Depression years, so uh, as an infant I could have some vitamin and mineral supplements. I wish actually they had continued that. Uh, but Annie and I were very lucky for that reason. Recent research shows that many children who do not have enough to eat wind up with diminished capacity to understand and learn what is these days called cognitive impairment. Children don't have to be starving for this to happen. Even mild undernourishment, the kind that's most common among people in poverty in America, uh, can do it. It can happen before the baby is born, if the mother isn't eating enough. It can happen in infancy. It can happen in childhood. When there isn't enough food, the body has to make a kind of decision about how to invest the limited foodstuffs available to it. And survival comes first, growth comes second, and in this kind of uh, nutritional triage, the body seems obliged to rank learning last. It's sort of better to be stupid and alive than smart and dead. Uh, but the net result is that there are possible severe learning impairments uh, from having not enough to eat. Instead of showing an enthusiasm, a zest for learning as most healthy youngsters do, and which is a tool of our survival, the undernourished child becomes bored, apathetic, unresponsive, and more severe malnutrition leads to lower birth rates and in its absolutely most extreme forms to smaller brains. What was once considered relatively mild undernutrition is now understood to be potentially associated with lifelong cognitive impairment. Children who are undernourished even on a short-term basis may have a diminished capacity to learn for the rest of their lives. And millions of American children go hungry every week. Also, uh, just parenthetically, lead poisoning, which is endemic in inner cities, also results in serious learning deficits. I think Senator Leahy was absolutely right when he said that this was a national security problem. Because when millions of children grow up with diminished capacity to learn, it affects all areas of the nation, including the economy. 
Some programs that have been wisely instituted on the federal or state level deal with malnutrition. The special supplement food program for women, infants, and children called WIC, W-I-C. The school breakfast and lunch programs, the summer food service program. All of these have been shown to work. Uh, all of these are connected with the legislation before your committee, Senator Harkin, although they don't get to all the people who need them. I'd like to just read a passage from uh, the recently published uh, book, Starting Points, Meeting the Needs of Our Youngest Children, published by the Carnegie Corporation of New York on WIC. Participation in WIC, they say, reduces by 15 to 25 percent the chance that a high-risk pregnant woman will deliver a premature or low birth weight baby. It increases the likelihood that these women will receive early regular prenatal care and that their children will get regular pediatric care and immunizations. Mothers and children who are at greatest risk, those who are poor, minority, and poorly educated, benefit most. WIC's cost effectiveness has been clearly demonstrated because it significantly reduces the chance of prematurity and low birth weight and thus avoids extraordinary costs of neonatal intensive care that these conditions typically entail, the savings can be substantial. The average cost of providing WIC services to a woman throughout her pregnancy is estimated to be less than $250. The costs of sustaining a low birth weight baby in a neonatal intensive care unit for one day are many times that amount. Despite its demonstrated success, however, WIC has never been fully funded. It currently serves about 4 million women and children out of an eligible population of 7 million, and I very much hope that the deliberations of this committee can push the availability of WIC towards 7 million. In its early days, this nation had one of the highest, perhaps the highest, literacy rates in the world. Of course, women and slaves didn't count in those days. As early as 1635, there had been public schools in Massachusetts. Political theorists came from other countries to witness this national wonder, vast numbers of ordinary working people who could read and write and debate and argue. Our devotion to education for all propelled discovery and invention, a vigorous democratic process, and an upward mobility that pumped our economic health. Today, for various reasons, including undernutrition of the very young, the United States is not the world leader in literacy, nor is it the world leader in infant mortality. In fact, it's at the low end of the industrial nations in uh, how many of our babies we manage to save. Many of those judged literate are unable to read and understand very simple material much less a sixth grade textbook or an instruction manual or a bus schedule or a mortgage statement. And the sixth grade textbooks of today are much less challenging than those of a few decades ago, while the literacy requirements at the workplace are more demanding than ever. The gears of undernutrition, poverty, ignorance, hopelessness, and low self-esteem all mesh to create a kind of perpetual failure machine that grinds down dreams from generation to generation. We, all of us, bear the cost of keeping this machine running. And illiteracy, and to the extent that it contributes, undernutrition is the linchpin of this failure machine. Even if we were able to harden our hearts to the shame and misery experienced by the victims, the cost of illiteracy to all of us is severe. The cost in medical expenses and hospitalization, the cost in crime and prisons, the cost in special education, the cost in low productivity and in potentially brilliant minds who could help solve the dilemmas besetting us. Even if we didn't have a microgram of compassion in us, it would still make sense to take heroic steps to avoid undernutrition and malnutrition in fetuses, infants, and children and to make reading available and attractive to all Americans. This will not solve all our problems, but it will take us far. Uh, Senator Harkin, that's the end of my prepared sta statement. I, I did want to uh, uh, just make a uh, remark to Senator Craig, who asked for uh, some scientific uh, underpinnings. 
And uh, I'd like to uh, perhaps uh, add to the record or at least give to Senator Craig the uh, statement on the link between nutrition and cognitive development in children prepared by the Center on Hunger, Poverty, and Nutrition Policy at Tufts University, which has some nice uh, uh, scientific references in the back. That objection will make that a part of the record, too. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sagan. Uh, Dr.